how are you? Fine, thank you. Unfortunately, I cannot be with you and Judith and this wonderful event, but thank you for inviting me. Th thanks to you. Now, <laughs> I think that in order to establish the context, the first question for you should be, how is a typical day for you in your school when you are using chess, as I said? Okay, uh, I'm starting always welcoming the kids in the school, but then right away around nine o'clock, I normally have a whole class um, presentation where I go to a, a homeroom, what we call here a homeroom, and then I introduce a concept. Like, for example, the other week we were introducing a concept about a skill in life and a skill in chess. We were talking about uh, how I can identify my personal space and how I interact with the others around me. We use the teaching of the king as that tool to help us understand and how you react with others. Then after I do this whole presentation, I go to do a couple of individual uh, counselings. And in that individual situation, I bring the student. The student is identifying me with, with maybe a specific um, problem. In this case, separation. We use the chess as a way to help him develop the, the strategy of thinking in a positive way in every situation. Later, I, I go to the recess and in recess I use something like, the, well, I, we have heard about the playground a type of a big chessboard. I saw it in Lorena too in, in Canarias. So I bring the whole chessboard, the big chessboard, and then I interact with several groups. And at the end, I write a lot of journals. I do an interactive journal where in that journal, I ask questions to the kids, they can draw me. And always I have at the end of the book, a game who I play. I make a move, they make a move, and I'm keeping teaching. More or less is how my day goes. Uh -huh. And how did you convince the school staff and the administration about using chess as a counseling uh, tool? Well, first, uh, as you said it, I used to work in an, in an, in Barakers, in Joan Lelek at Barakers, and for 15 years. So for my new school, I want to introduce it in a very natural way. I was only talking about uh, showing to the kids. And then obviously I present my work from the other previous school, but in this new school, nobody knew about chess. So I have to show a little bit the, the research and the field camp I did in my other school. And then naturally I present my chess. Remember we were in a virtual setting last year this year we are back in the school, so it was a little bit simple because I bring my chessboard, I create, and in two seconds the kids enjoy it, and then the kids and the teachers see two important things. Right now, in this is my this is September, so fifth week, I have already 25 notes from kids. I want to keep playing chess. You introduce it quickly to the school in during the homeroom classes and then in recess. So the, the teachers are so impressed that these little kids, my school is kindergarten, first and second, they want to know more about the game. Mm -hmm. And how about the students? How was their reaction when you started to introduce chess? I, I think that we have always talked about that uh, in terms of when you really present it to the kids. And remember, many of these kids have different backgrounds. You explained it a little bit from my old school. In the place where I work, in my school, we have diverse people from many countries. I use also a tool that is I brought different chess sets around the world and I introduce that concept, like I bring a chess of, of of El Salvador and then somebody from Kenya and then the kids right away understand oh they have their own culture like they have in the family and then we move away uh, to talk and then the kids get so excited with the big chess pieces I, I saw how Lorena was explaining about the culture of the school uh, you have to bring that culture to this to the students because they will create the demand for the rest but we Unfortunately, 
and that is the thing I'm more concerned is if you don't have the structure at the school level and above the school level like you are trying to promote through feed and through, it's very difficult because you can change right away from one school to another and then the whole program collapse. As I can see, I think one of the most positive consequences of your fantastic work is that you are creating a chess culture in the school. I mean, chess mm -hmm. is becoming part of the school's culture. Is that right? Yeah, that, that is what I'm trying to develop. Is, is chess in education, but as a, as a part of the student life, where every around, around the school, like... A, it has been described here and Judy Pollard and many other programs where you can have it in a P class, you have a concept of chess. For, for me, another important aspect is the family. They, many of the families I work with, they don't know about the game. So how, how to implement and connect with the families by training them. Mm -hmm. I think we uh, urgently need you to share a concrete example of a counseling interaction using chess uh, with students. Okay, um, obviously if I had the tool behind me, it will be easier to explain it. But for example, I set up a position of simple uh, rooks and, and I put like four rooks and then a queen in the other side trying to attack some of the rooks. And then the kids have to identify. In the beginning they say, oh, I am alone, my queen. I don't have any safe space. And then I have to find, okay, concentrate. I know you have five rooks and there's only like maybe two squares who are free, identified. At the same time, when we are working with that, I relate to them saying, oh, you feel so overwhelming about the situation. In this case, it was a separation. You don't see any, any way out. Your dad left the house, you spent time in your house with your dad, then your mom, and you miss both of them. In life, sometimes we have the reality, that just chess position, find positive things that you can find by the two situations. After they develop that, then they start thinking, oh, yes, by going to my dad, maybe it's closer to the pool, I can go to the pool, the pool with him. And you help them develop that sense of uh, positive statements that they can do. And then we do it through, as everybody has described it, Jerry and many others, how these skills of flexibility thinking. But you have to do it in a concrete way. The math teachers use manipulatives. We, in the counseling and psychological arena, we use the chess pieces and the ball. And finally, remembering uh, our conversations, you have a concept which I find, uh, found it very interesting, the chess hero. What is the chess yeah. hero in this context? Well, if you see, um, you see the, the, the history of this concept about chess in education, is somebody who come in school, maybe it's a former player, maybe it's an educator who have find something, and then it can be in a refugee camp, like Chess in Frontera, as many other places, see something and try to implement it. And, and then they see the results, people around them, mainly the, the teachers and some, sometimes the parents. And then the, the whole program and the kids who are introduced to that uh, activity, they become more happy, they, 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 pay, they engage more in the school. Unfortunately, sometimes the, that chess hero have to move and then the whole problem collapsed. And I think through the, the effort that many of, of you, the FIDE and many other people and many governments are doing, we need to, in some ways, institutionalize chess in education to not have only this chess hero. It's still, they are wonderful because you can go to a refugee camp, you see somebody for maybe six months or one, more, one year they are there, the lives of those kids and that families are very enriched by this concept and then they have a tool when they arrive to the country. Well, Fernando, let me be very sincere. One of the best examples of chess hero I know is yourself. So <laughs> thanks a lot Thank and please keep going. What you are doing is really very important and we need more people like you. Thank you very much, Fernando. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Thank you for inviting me.